Let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Queer theater and how Island City Stage delivers. Oh, I've been waiting for this story. I'm so glad. So tonight we're diving into the heart of the art scene in Greater Fort Lauderdale and we shine a spotlight on Island City Stage, a theater with a mission to give voice to the rich tapestry of LGBTQ plus stories. Founded in 2012, this professional theater has become a beacon of inclusivity, offering a platform for narratives that resonate with love, loss, struggle, and humor. At the helm of this transformative theater is Andy Rogo, the executive Ooh. director whose passion for storytelling and dedication to authenticity have propelled Island City Stage to new heights. The theater is known for its commitment to presenting works that speak to the universal human experience while celebrating the diversity of the LGBTQ plus community. From thought-provoking dramas to side-splitting comedies, Island City Stage delivers performances that captivate audiences and foster dialogue. With a roster of talented artists boasting credits from Broadway to TV, each production comes to life with unparalleled skill and nuance. As we delve deeper into the creative vision behind Island City Stage, we're privileged to have Andy Rogo as an anchor at Queer News Tonight. Tonight, welcome, Andy. Thanks so much for having me. Oh my God, thank you for all you do. First of all, you know, um, you know, 2020 when um, when the pandemic hit, you know, nobody was hit more than the arts and nonprofit organization, right? You guys are everywhere right now. You're everything, everywhere, all at once. Kind of like the movie, right? Everyone that I run into has seen a play over at Island City, is going to a play over at Island City, or is excited about a play coming to Island City. Did you think that during the pandemic that you would be so fruitful right now? Uh, we didn't know what to think uh, for part of it, but we were one of the first theaters in the in the entire region, actually, that started performing live. Um, during the pandemic, you know, with very limited audiences and distance. Um, but I thought it would take us much longer to come back than it has. Mm -hmm. It really only took us about two years to get back to where we had been pre-pandemic. Um, and we're just about there now. So it's really great that, uh, uh, that we're there. And what's interesting is since the pandemic too, we have a very unique region in the fact that there's not just us. But there's the foundry next door to us and Empire Stage, which is just down the street from us, all doing mostly LGBT work. There is no other city in the country that has that. That's amazing. Not even New York, L.A., nobody. Only us. I love that. Um, I love that. So it just shows the strength of our community. Well, and something that I'm loving is the inclusivity, okay? And every time that somebody is um, interviewed from Island City, that's something that they always touch base on, you mm. know? Like, I'm excited that you have Pulp there right now, you know? And it's a lesbian-themed right. play, you know? So, you know, I, we need more representation. What? How did that come to pass? So, well, first, let me just say how both strange and wonderful it is to be on this stage because Island City was born out of the demise of another theater company that performed where Shut we up. are uh, right Shut now up. in this Damn. Oh in God. this chapel. You yeah. work. Like, um, you so, uh, <laughs> I, so I have to be honest, you know, I when I started Island City, it was because community members asked me to because they wanted to have an LGBTQ theater in the community. There wasn't one at the time. And I didn't really know what that meant. But I knew that we had to serve everybody in the community, not just the gay white men that are the majority. Mm -hmm. um, and we are think still the only theater, I think, that really does try to serve all of our community um, by telling all the stories. Um, so I, the first thing I said is we're not going to do stories that are just have uh, gratuitous sex mm -hmm. because they think that's what a lot of people thought gay theater was. That's what Ronnie does. So Ronnie does that sometimes. So, you're, so yes. he's got that. And he has that market. I love you, Ronnie and, he, and he does, he does and it he very does well. Really well. He does it very well. <laughs> but that was not that was not what we wanted to do. I really did want to tell stories and and felt that the community that's what they wanted was to see themselves reflected on stage. Um, so those are the stories we look at. Well, so. and you and you really do have an iconic array of plays. Okay, some of the ones that I've seen. Okay, love, yeah. valor, compassion. Okay, that was awesome. I saw the Christmas Carol there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, I saw Thrill Me, and now I'm going to see Pulp this weekend. Yeah. You know, we need a trans representative. Play. Well, we did. So we did a trans play last year called Rotterdam. Nice. That was about a a lesbian couple in which one of them decided that she was going to transition. And, um, oh my God, I saw it. That, that, yes, it was like a, it was like a British undertone or something. Yes. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, they I were from England, they were living fantastic. in Rotterdam. Yes. yes. Uh, so we've done that. We did a play about the black HIV experience called One and Two, 
Um, in fact, the director of that play won a Carbonell Award that year for Best Director of a Play. Nice. Um, so we have we really do try. But I will say, just to start some conversation, mm -hmm. it also demonstrates to me that, that we have our own issue, that we are, as an LGBTQ community, we are not always together, mm -hmm. right? Because we have a much harder time selling tickets to the things that are about the black community or about the trans community. You know, we still have work to do in encouraging people to experience all the stories of our community. And we're all evolving and, and still learning. And right. So, I mean, I think that's a wonderful thing. Um, you received a grant recently from the Wharton Foundation, we right? Did. A considerable uh, um, grant. What, what can we and see then, that's going to come out of that? So it was one of the biggest, I think, cultural grants the county's ever seen. It was $250,000. <laughs> Ka so the new way. we are we're partnering with um, <laughs> we're partnering with two other theaters, Gable Stage, which is located down in Coral Gables, and Brevo Theater, which is a relatively new black theater company, young black company. And we're doing this play called Fat Ham. It was the Pulitzer Prize winner in 2022, and it is a a take on Hamlet with a black family at a barbecue in South Carolina. Oh my God, ah, I'm there for it. I it's am very for funny. It. Uh, it's a really terrific play. It was on Broadway last year, nominated for a bunch of Tony Awards. Uh, so that's what that grant is for. So we're going to be doing five weeks at, at our theater next April, and then it'll move down to Gable Stage uh, in Coral Gable. So we'll play a total of 10 weeks. Plays here never run that long, but it will give a chance for as many audience members around the, the uh, uh, by county region to see the play mm -hmm. um, and we hope to increase the kinds of audience members that we get yeah. we're going to have a barbecue every sunday um, after the show we're going to do a lot of fun things bonnie can grill with it. she knows can you can oh grill. you know what that's i can eat i can eat i can <laughs> eat <laughs> i can eat i can eat i can eat i can figure it out i can figure it out um so handy um in at the end of may kicking off pride month i'm going to be hosting um an event uh called take pride from yeah. history fort lauderdale right and i'll be hosting it but you are one of the honorees I am. that evening i was oh. very uh, thank you very so much for your work for your support for your advocacy for your activism you. because that's what you're doing over there at island city you really are thank you what well, was really honored to be recognized especially for pride month i'm i'm really really thrilled i'm gonna give you a big ass hug on stage okay cool. i will look remember forward that, to that remember that yeah. um christopher i wanted to ask you have you ever wanted to maybe make one of your short films into a stage experience Very. because i mean it's two completely different worlds obviously but you all started at the same place you know with sitting down and writing something out yeah. you know yeah would you it, ever? That's interesting because so many of my actors from Somebody to Love, my feature film, most of them were theater actors first because mm -hmm. I pulled from Florida State University's uh, theater department. And they all had worked to a degree with theater, but very little and minimally with film. So I, I know how theater actors work. I know how to, kind of how their brain works yeah. and kind of having to tr transition them into film was an interesting challenge. And for some, it was a breeze. And for others, you know, they need a little bit of work. So, yeah, but like, it's wow. a completely different style, right? Yeah. Because, you know, on stage, you have to be playing to people who are far away from you. Mm -hmm. You know, when you've got the camera right here, yeah. it's a very different way of acting. Yeah. Ooh, um, and you really have to be conscious of what's happening on your face when you're on yeah. film. Yeah. Um, That's a challenge because so many of my stories, I feel like, are very emotive and some and like yes there's a lot of dialogue involved but i feel like for me like the language of film is so important because how the shot is composed mm -hmm. tells the, the cinematography story. tells mm -hmm. the story. yeah exactly Completely. so with a play you know you could like in theory maybe i could like transition <laughs> but hey andy's think, right here <laughs> <Good. laughs> collaboration uh, andy thank you so much for all you do honestly thank you know you. the arts you know that thank the gays we love we love the arts we live for the arts we breathe for the arts and to have something locally you know because that's something that like you know as a kid i grew up in jersey so i would cut school and go to broadway right that's what i would do oh, i'm yeah. that queer kid right and uh people here didn't have that until island city until wilton stages until all of that came to pass and it's all right there in one little area get your tickets now okay because it's going to be an incredible yeah, incredible season Great. thank you so much thank Andy. you